everybody. Welcome back. Live at Drew's House, Joppa Afternoon Drive, the studios in Newburyport. We got ourselves a music show. The guest today, Michael Bernier. Trying to find a piece of paradise. We search for something more, 
something high, something that'll keep us alive. Michael Bernier. Yeah. How are you? Welcome aboard. Oh, I'm feeling so good. Thank you so very much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. It's Thanks a good for doing day it. to be alive. <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah. Is it feeling like spring out there? Not it quite is. yet, right? But we're getting it's there. It's coming. It's in the air. Yeah, it right. is. Well, I, I told you uh, we walked in here together, and I told you as we walked in that uh, I think you're the person that uh, most of the musical guests that have come on here are shocked the most that I haven't got to know yet. That you have not met Michael. How is that possible? Here we are ending the shock factor. The shock factor is yeah. over, yeah. I really appreciate you coming outside and walking. Oh, yeah. I don't do that for everybody. I feel it right <laughs> off the gate there. It's like, what? this is a good human. When I can, I try. Yeah. You know. Well, you're succeeding with me, and I, really, <laughs> I recognize, appreciate Sarah's it. Sarah's out there laughing, the producer, Sarah Blackstone, <laughs> because she knows that half the time my musical guests beat me here because I'm running around like a maniac half the time. Time, but uh. I gotta say, I love Sarah too. I've been seeing her around in the music scene, the Aww. TV world for years, and she is so wonderful. Always has a smile and she a welcoming is, vibe. She is so good. Yeah. She's brought a lot to our little show here too. Yes. And, uh, the Sarah touch, so it's been great. Thank you, Sarah. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's a lot to start the show, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so fest, first yeah. time on the show, man. It is. I'm so excited to be here, yeah. man. I, I've heard. I, I know plenty of people that have been through. Yeah. And yeah, actually yeah. in my neighborhood because I, I live right here in Newburyport. Yeah. I love it. And it, yeah, man, I'm glad this came together. So for, you live in Newburyport now, what, 15 years, you said? Yeah, about 15 years there in you a go. row. That yeah. makes you like a, uh, that, that, makes you, that makes you something. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> 15 years, cool. So where, where, were you, uh, where were you born? I was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts. I yeah. went to schools there, grew up in Drake at Mass. Yep. And um, went to college out at Bridgewater State. Ooh. And then I kind of traveled the world for a while. Traveled the world? Backpack for... Uh, several months a year just experiencing new ways of living new norms really submerging myself in other cultures mm -hmm. for months at a time most often living alone in a tent wow. throughout the process to really make sure i was aware of what's happening in the world outside of you know the yeah what i've seen in the united states and um I honestly, for the majority of those travels, those years that that was happening, those nine or 10 years, I I just knew I was gonna live in the bush somewhere. I was gonna build my little bush house, <laughs> cut down the trees on my yep. own. And I was definitely living in the bush. I designed the house in my little journal. And um, on my last trip, I was in Belize, Belize in Dangriga village, same thing, living in a tent while most people there were living in grass huts and cooking their food over a fire. Um, at some point during that trip, I, I started to ask myself, like, why do, what am I doing? Why am I doing all of this? Yeah. And I, I realized in that moment that it was all that traveling in the world and and being in these unique situations, some beautiful, some dangerous, meeting all these people and um, seeing that there's so many things that are considered normal in so many places. At that moment, I was like, oh, it's so I can love my home and my family and everyone for whoever they choose to be even more. And I think that, that those years of travel really allowed me to become a very open accepting loving of i live like i want you to be you drew like you're the most appealing you can possibly be to me and i assume to the entire world when you're really being yeah. yourself like that's what what i want out of people and i just that's it and I, it took those the travels to really help me understand i couldn't I agree more doing. i'm a big fan of me yeah. and no, no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no you missed the point yeah, there we Drew. we don't want somebody else man <laughs> well that's good so you found a good rooted person now back in newburyport that's fantastic yeah. man and it's a beautiful community here it's been yeah. so welcoming to me and what i have going on i, I love it and yeah, good people awesome a man. lot of good people here I, well the show also uh, has a uh, to give you a thank you because you put some uh, very great musicians in our hands yeah so, uh, sent them this way which we appreciate of course uh, a lot of great music out there right now actually would you yeah. agree with that um i think that there is far more amazing music like mind-blowing music yeah. 
than people are aware of. It's, it's definitely true. It's hard to find it. Yep. Um, you know, the majority of the mainstream masses are pushing a certain select 12 or 24 acts. But yep. when you are like a part of something like this, like I was a host of a syndicated radio show for 15 years, and what I learned there yeah. is this country and other countries are crawling yeah. with, oh my God, I would just watch the performances week after week yeah, from people yeah. I'd never heard of and just like... This is the best band in the world. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I have people. Week. Yeah. I have people sitting in this chat like that. That you know, I've heard you before, just yeah. you know, poking around because knowing you come on. But I've had people that you know kind of came on at the last minute, recommend recommended from people, and voices just surprised me. Like yeah. God, that voice comes out of you. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like, and it's shock. It's great shocking. It's a mm. it's a great feeling to have. So you know, good. be like yeah. kind of get that ch that chills factor. So, uh, it's about you playing around a lot these days, or. Yeah, typically I try to do nothing in the winter months yeah. um, for from the holiday through to April. You do? You try uh, to take some downtime? Yeah. Yeah. I take just like at my desk in my studio with my family time. And yep. typically the month of February, I like to go south with the family and hang nice. out in the sunshine. Did you um, do that this time? Yes. Nice. I just came back from a nice trip to... Florida for oh, a few Oh, beautiful. Weeks. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Um, well, I'm actually playing a show this weekend right here in, uh, in, in the Newburyport scene at the Sunset Club on Plum Island. Yeah, I heard uh, you raving about that yeah. place. I, I don't think I've been in there yet. Oh, so, so dope. Great people running yep. that spot. Um, the love is real in there. And on Saturday nights, there's a, a music series that, that's happening there, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the winter months inside. And we've had some epic, epic acts through there. Uh, my company, Evolvement Music, is coordinating it with Enjoy Your Life brand and the Sunset Club. We had Paul Wollstonecroft from Slightly Stupid there recently. We just had Chris Fritz Grice in the room. We got the Dub Assassins coming through from New Jersey. Like um, amazing music going Sweet. on in there. Ja Reef, international acts. like, And, um, this Saturday I'll be there. It's a free show, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's just a good vibe. There you go. It's, like, it's really hanging out, social scene. All right. Yeah. So there you go, Michael Bernier, Saturday. You can make your plans around that if you'd like. Um, what is the what made you pick up the guitar back in the day? Do you remember that moment? Was it a was it an artist? Was it? A... Well, I would say there are two things that that brought me into the world of music. Um, as far as the guitar, I have three older brothers mm -hmm. that I love very much, and um, one of my brothers had come home from college his freshman year with a guitar. And he's, you know, seven, eight years older than me. So I was like 12, 11 years old, and he was playing the guitar and singing. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> doing that. that well, that's cool. I can see this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, my father was always walking around the house just singing, and always singing yeah. out loud. And that's like the people we are in my family, just always singing. You say a word. And I just start singing a song with that word in it without even knowing. And that's like when these things came together, the guitar and singing, I just was forever and to this day excited. Like you get yeah, back yeah. to your guitar and you're all goofy and ready. Like, oh, I want to sing and you're write something. It's, never bored with that thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful friend and a great relationship. <laughs> yeah. It is. And it's been very good to me over the course of my career. So. Did you bring it uh, on your travels? I try to again <laughs> February specifically do no not not that I mean like the world travels. oh world travels yeah, of yeah. course yeah yeah, yeah yeah I would have I had more of a teardrop guitar full size it was uh, in the backpack neck, but a smaller <laughs> body just strapped onto me yeah 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 and they get abused out there and whatever yeah. but that's the whole idea you can meet a lot of people people always want to Oh, see somebody yeah, with a guitar it. and they go definitely we're gonna need to hear a little gap. bit of that <laughs> yeah favorite what's your favorite what was your favorite uh, place you saw in the world what was the uh favorite city or i don't know country where um tough one i really yeah it's you know like humans everything is beautiful in its own way um i found a lot of peace in the jungles of dominica in the oh. west indies how about that? Um, about a mile into the rainforest, we cleared a little space and set up our tent and lived out there and did a lot of hiking and a lot of walking and living off the land, you know. Yeah. The most we could get was like, you know, take an hour hike to a village and get some potatoes. 
Um, but for the most part, you know, coconuts, bananas, avocados, wow. whatever fruit huh. we could pick. And there was a nice mountain stream runoff nearby. And you could clean that water with, you know, carbon filters, whatever. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to need to know more about this. I know that the rainforest live in not always, there's some dangerous stuff out there, right? Oh, yeah. You know, got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> always those things, but I choose to focus on, like, this is going to work <laughs> perfectly. It's all going to be just right. You know, uh, you know what's funny? I was in the uh, Costa, Rica, <laughs> Co- Costa Rica for my honeymoon. There's a, there was a rainforest. Uh, yeah. around where just, you know, we just went for a jog. Oh, this is a beautiful paradise. And we decided to go for a jog. My wife, my wife and I, and uh, it was nice, like path, touristy path, and everything that you know, just outside the hotel. Well, yeah, there's some of that. Like that was beautiful. I was like not worried about the monkeys. That's natural. But uh, so we run through, and then the the guy at the front desk, uh, the place we were staying at, says to us as you know, we got back. I think it was the next day. Said, "Oh, you guys went out there by yourselves? Well, yeah. How deep did you go? We did a few miles in there. Really? Oh, okay." Yeah, no, we do the tour guides there just in case, you know, you run into any snakes or any poisonous. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> oh, I was, yeah. wasn't even thinking that. I was like, I mean, I'm sure you should have been thinking so, that. In Costa oh. Rica, you're looking at tarantulas oh. that are like 12, Yep, that was another inches. one, tarantulas. That, that one lost my wife. wasps out there, oh. which is like, looks like a regular, like a yellow jacket, but it's this big. Yep. Uh, yeah, this, a lot of this was news to us. Oh, come on. <laughs> Watch your step, kid. Oh, man. It was, uh, my wife was like, I cannot believe we did this, just the two of us. And the guy's, no, no, you were fine. I mean, chances are you're not going to see it on the path. Uh, it was like, nothing's ever happened on the path. He goes, no, things have definitely happened on the path. <laughs> yeah. The colloquial phrase that goes with that, um, I believe it's ignorance is bliss. Yes, there it is. Yeah, yeah that is that. <laughs> actually, I remember, actually, one of the guys, he, he was saying, one of the guys had a, uh, I think it was a snake, if I remember correctly, but had a, uh, long story short, went off the path a little bit trying to show his tour. And the tour guide got, tour guide was like hurt. And uh, like whatever the snake was, you had to get like t- attention quickly. Like there's yeah. a time frame that like she got there. And like, so basically he should have been rushing to the hospital. Sucking Hospitals the aren't right down the street there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, the guy finished the tour. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my favorite story. This. At the end of the tour, he was like, I got to go get some help. They're like, what? oh, my God, you, didn't, you finished the tour, man? Come on, we got to go. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> that was one of my favorite Costa Rica stories. Anyway, Mike, Michael Bernier joining us here in the Newburyport story, Studios playing some music. And uh, that first song was cool. What was that one? That's called Piece of Paradise. All right. Um, when did you write it? It was probably, realistically, like 10 years ago I wrote that song. Yeah. It, it surfaced on the first Free Volt album. Okay. Uh, Free Volt is the, the full band that I perform with. Um, that first album called Take the Product. Yeah, and uh, it's about finding joy in every situation, you know? Like yeah, I, yeah. I've always been an individual. Like, if I have to go do something that I wouldn't choose to do on my own, like, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to go do this, I'll still go and have the best time. Like, <laughs> if I'm there... Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have the best time. It doesn't matter. So I'm always like, "That's a good I life." I care outlook. what the situation is. I'm gonna love this because I don't love this, and yeah. I, whatever. I'm gonna embrace it and see what it like. Just, I don't know, I've always felt that way. There's no situation of, I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions, but where there isn't joy or something beautiful to come out of it. Yeah, it's a beautiful way to look yeah. at things. I like That's that. How I feel, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> That's just honesty right there is all it is. And you get that passion when you sing. I like that. You yeah. can tell. That's one thing you can't fake, right, is that the authenticity when you when you sing. Yeah. There's I don't no reason to hold back your emotions. and yeah, yeah. That, That's the beauty of art. It is. It's this expression that if I walked around in the streets just doing that, yep. I'll be perceived as crazy, which yeah, people would say that I am. <laughs> but when you're performing, you can let it all ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's roll that little segue into another one. What do you say? You want to play another one? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's do a Pounds of Love. Let's do it. All right. Here in our new Report Studios, our guest today is Michael Bernier. Take it away, my friend. Hustling pounds of love I'm 
slanging kilos of love, I'm pushing them pounds of love, when I'm quickly flipping bricks of love, yeah, I'm pumping them pounds of love, oh, oh, I, I will sell up to the day that I die, don't know why, but it's sometimes so hard to find. Let's you and I take this moment in time to get high on love. Yeah, on love, on love, on love. But I'm driving now. Michael Bernier, very nice, my friend. Thank you so much. I love the, uh, th that's what you do when you do yeah, the, uh, yeah. the live show there. You get the, uh, sometimes you get the fans call in. I don't know if you heard that. You, you power through that. On the, I've, been, I've been joking. People have been uh, calling during the show lately. I'm tempted to pick up the phone and say, uh, you're on. I find reasons to love everything. Like I said, the, phone, the telephone is ringing, baby. So, I you know, love it. You might not have never so handed it to live. There you go. <laughs> Who knows if you'll ever have a moment where you're singing that part of the song again where the phone rings, right? I, I was recording, I think it was actually that song. <laughs> is that a phone song? In, uh, PB and J Records. <laughs> oh, no, my buddy Jay. That's right. Jay Pasal is my good homie. Is he? And right? his dog yeah. started barking. Yes. And he was like, I'm so sorry. We could take, take again. I'm like, 
I want the dog. In the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny you say that, man. The uh, first of all, Jay's a great guy. He's been on the show, and uh, he's one of one of my first guests on the show, actually, uh, way back in the day. And he's I love that guy. Um, but uh, my, my dad was an old uh, singer, not old. Don't mean that. Dad, he's a, he's a but he's a you know he's do weddings and everything. He did a Christmas album back in the day, and um, our dog I grew up with, Maddie. Was yep. uh, did the same thing. It was just barking at one point and like barked at like the perfect beat during one of the Christmas songs, and like to this day, like I, my dad gets kind of sad hearing it, like in a good way, because he thinks of our old dog Maddie when he hears it. It's like kind of sweet. It turned into like a sweet story, you know? Like oh, there's Maddie in that. So little... um, I released an album recently called Enjoy Your Life. Michael Bernie, Enjoy Your Life. It was a, a solo project, but a full full band effort on there. Yeah. Um, but one of the tracks is with Mighty Mystic, and we actually featured my homie Ryan Inc.'s dog on the track, his dog Jenny. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Jenny, so Jenny. I'll, I'll bring the dogs into the studio <laughs> on purpose and record them, too. They're the best. Gotta love dogs. Yeah. I got two. I got two. Cra- I got two crazy ones at home. I told, I told them I'll be back later for our walk. I love you, so dogs. It's time here. Love your dogs. Yeah. It's yeah, a good, yeah, yeah. It's a good T-shirt. Nobody's made that T-shirt yet, have they? Love your dogs. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe that's your lane, man. What do you got there? You got to enjoy your life? Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Have enjoy right. your life brand. You know, you know, you know. Is this you? And Yes. This is enjoy your, brand? your life brand is, is my, my that, brand. Um, but I brought you a little, oh, some goodies in there. You, oh, this yeah. is sweet of you. I, I did. You can take them right I'll out take now. It, take it now. All right. Uh, that's sweet. This is always setting path. up for, uh, oh, man, look oh, at you. Only good things. You got to enjoy your life hats? Positive experiences and enjoy your life <laughs> hat for you. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. I'm See, oh, I'm, yeah. with my, uh, I don't, do you struggle with the hat? You got, you got more hair than I, I do. I can't really be doing that. I, I know it's hard, right? To do the hat, and then it's a whole scene. <laughs> it really is. This is, a, this is a scene too. But <laughs> it's easier for me. You're one, yeah, one of the few guests that has more hair than I do. I mentioned that to you uh, beforehand. There you go. There, there you go. it yeah. is. This is cool. Yeah, we see you start. You do a little bit of everything then. Yeah, man. Um, stickers are good. We put stickers up around the studio. Yeah, my, I, I have a. A formula that I follow, Uh-oh. right? It's very simple, Drew. <laughs> if you do something you don't like, yep. you don't do it again. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I have always been in an effort to enjoy my life, yeah. to do what I want to do with my time, to realize I decide how I feel, and to know that I'm in control. Yep. So I have been in pursuit of doing what I want to do, whether that be for pleasure or for my career path, and it has worked out. Um, I play music. I travel the country as a master of ceremonies and happiness, just saying the nicest things, doing like motivational talks for health and fitness mostly, and then a lot of music festivals, maybe 90 dates a year from Vermont to the Keys to California to Washington, between Virgin Islands. Doing that. No kidding. And then, what does that entail? Give me a little more on that. I don't want to just have you pass by I'm that. like, uh, you go on stage making people or? feel good. Yeah. So yeah. like music festivals, I'll be the guy that talks in between every act. Um, Look at that. And as far as health and fitness world is really where I came up in that. Yeah. And it's a lot of road races where I'm making the people feel so good, getting ready in the right frame of mind to get out there and own the day. Yeah. Um, and that's it. I, in short, I say nice things. And make people feel really good. That is like half of my life right now. Good for you. And it's, I'm in front of millions of people a year doing that. Are you one of those who like the running like really gets you going? Like that's a I huge love, part. I run. Yeah. I love running. Yeah. It's like, it works everything out. It's yep. like meditation. You have to, you're forced to, when you run alone for great distance, uh, you're forced to deal with yourself and your thoughts yeah. and the issues that are within you they come to the forefront and you just there's nothing else to do when you're running but run and iron out your problems yeah. so I know the majority of runners have a strong mental health and self perception and understanding because they're working out the issues all the time they're in yeah. a good place so you'd rather and you prefer running by yourself or opposed to no, i love it all you love I, it all, i yeah. have like some people that i run yeah. around here with on the rail trail yeah and then a lot of days i'm out by myself you, um, you were out i saw because we're social media friends now yeah. i saw that you were out on one of those cold like snowstorm days right. no, no you said no excuses to people right 
Uh, yeah, I'm like the David <laughs> Goggins mentality. There's no reason. It's yeah. not too cold to go out there. My body's going to work. There you go. I'm going to do it. And people are like, what are you doing out here? Why are you out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, because you're not. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll run through where you, you know, your face freezes. You got icicles off you. but No big deal. It's no super feat. Human yep. limit, like we create our own limitations. We're, we can do anything. Humans are capable of so, so much. I'm inspired already. Yeah, man. We, this, I'm there's run no out walls. Of the there's no box. <laughs> Just go for it. Yeah. Very nice. Was there ever a situation? Here's a good one. You'll like this. What was the last situation you were in that you were like, I don't want to be here? <laughs> uh, those exist. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. That would be I a would real. Fall in, I think it was the, um, I was running the Cape Cod Marathon. Oh, okay. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. And the last like 11 miles are all along the coast and it's it's still like up and down and up and down it was windy it was raining i'm at like mile 18 i'm just you know you you have to you're talking to yourself your thoughts yeah. your mind is telling you like what are you doing like if you don't want to be doing this like i always say like you don't like something don't do it this so, hurts yeah just stop yeah. you should just stop what are you doing <laughs> this is dumb who yeah. told you to do this what are you trying to prove let's move on and I remember in that moment, like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be doing this. But the yeah. other side of me made me power through it and then have, like, the black blown-out calf down uh, here yeah. from the muscles I tore. But, yeah, I mean, you, you, there's something about being out of your comfort zone that makes you, for lack of a word, better word, just a better human. Yeah, yeah. Like, step outside of the box. I love being uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Are you a hey. big marathoner or do you? Uh, no. No. Just I'm, like, I'm just a steady runner. I steady like runner, getting yeah. in seven to ten miles. I like just yeah. Running is beautiful. If I can run four days a week, get out there. That's great. I love man. it. Yeah, that's good for you. And my wife did Boston last year for the. Uh, she's like you. She's yeah. more you know not a huge. That was her first marathon. Yeah. But uh and yeah she said she loved it. It was a great great experience. Yeah. Uh, to the crowds and everything and. It's coming up again, the Boston yeah. Marathon. Quick one. It is. The uh, quick little uh, turnaround with the pandemic. Oh, that's how that worked out. I, I felt yeah, the same way. I'm like, yeah. It felt like they just had it, right? That quick? Yeah, well, because they had it in the, the fall this time. so mm. Which was weird because people ended up training in the summertime, which is different. You know, you train yeah. in the heat. But and now here we are again. What a world. What a world. <laughs> sure, so I've always liked that, though, because it's like the sign, another sign of spring. I like signs of spring. Yeah, those are always. I like signs of um, everything. I don't dislike winter, but I'm I don't so either. much more into the yeah. summer. <laughs> I, you know what's funny? As I get older, I was saying I feel like I, I have. Uh, I'm not like a big complainer, but I do. There have been some like harsh days this winter. I have found just like you know, no excuses. I'm not saying you can't run. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, like, it's harsh around here sometimes. It's just that bitter cold, it's you know. Like, I get it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You're running and the temp. The, you step outside. It says two degrees. Then you're running on the water and it's super windy. Yeah. And it is like this. Yeah. This is as ridiculous as people <laughs> tell me it is, yeah. but you still do it. Yeah. And then you're back home and you start your day like at the top of the mountain. Yeah. That's the thing. Like running the day, owning the day by the time I'm going to my desk. Exactly. Mm. See, I like the seasons change. Do you? I'm I big, like the seasons. I'm a big seasons change guy. I, I, I like I a taste like of I all can't of it. Abandon New England. Exactly. Like there's something about me that is a pine tree. Yes. I, I need this. I, yeah. I'm always like, I can't just leave behind the pine yeah. trees, the pine needles. Yeah. Skidding my like my bicycle. Just skidding the in smell. The pine needles, these just things. the smell of the pine needles. Yeah. The whole yeah. season's changing is beautiful. The it allergies does give you this sense of uh, <laughs> I have no allergies. Um, I used to have the pine sense trees. Sense of like uh, starting anew. Yeah. You know. When you live where it's totally beautiful all the time, it's like, oh, it's a new year, and like, yeah, yeah. it feels the same. 75 every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which I love, too. That's too, yeah. Mom, my San Diego guys are laughing at this right now. <laughs> yeah, it's because you haven't lived out here. Uh, <laughs> the uh, This is kind of a cool time for like musicians, too, right? Because, I mean, it just feels like, I mean, I know you have winter gigs, and you can play if you want to. Uh, maybe there's a cozy feel to certain places, but like once the weather gets warmer, it feels like just... A whole new like kind of thing opens yeah. up. More places. In New England, that's, that's yeah, sure. it's kind of like a right. jump into like almost People, concert season, yeah. right? Festival season. Yeah. Popping off outside music. People love music outside. Yeah. Yeah. Like when in my earlier years of doing this, I would just leave for the winter and go play in the warm places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is, but it's a whole different. Yeah, it's a whole different feel, I guess. What, what do you love most about the festivals? I mean, besides your what you do and when you're a part it's of a, them. So it's just a subculture here. Yeah. You're, 
three or four days in the woods with a bunch of hippies and wookies and <laughs> that's a very uh, specific yeah. festival <laughs> uh, yeah, this is like you know the scene that we're in and it's a yeah, it's a different world out there and it's yeah. everything goes you see and grown men dressed up like full-on butterflies dancing yeah. around with little ones it's like every you see everything yeah. so i i like like the fest that festival scene that like camping out in the woods scene where people put their guard down 100%. Yeah. There's there's no walls. It's just you when you step in you're saying, "Okay, we all talk to each other." Not worried about the Monday and work day. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Not worried about much out there. It's funny. I I have that same kind of in uh feeling <laughs> on festivals, not exactly the same, but but like one thing I've always liked about the festival life is it's always great to go see an artist you love and like, you know, get a full long show and all that. But the cool thing about festivals, every time I go to a festival, I discover a new band or new artists i yeah. discover something that i really really like and I'm, i take that like with me forever I, every festival i've ever been to i've discovered somebody some band that i really love you yeah. know yeah for which sure. is cool that i wouldn't have gone to see probably on my own you know just not yep. knowing anything about them I, I do love that about festivals that's a good thing for sure it is a good <laughs> thing and i'll start naming every artist that i take <laughs> let's hear it <laughs> no 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 uh but yes no, that is cool it's cool how many so how many festivals do you think you've done how many have you worked Oh, I don't know. It's been it's been a twenty years of yeah. playing. I don't know. You got some on the books already for this year? Yeah, we just announced uh, today the uh, Higher Education Music and Arts Festival in Lebanon, Maine. Wow! That Free Volt is performing on. Awesome. Um, and my company, Evolvement Music, actually does the talent buying for that festival, and we have a. Uh, who have we announced? I could say Mike Love, Joe Mercer Marley, Tropidella, Katana, The Late Ones, wow. uh, Of Good Nature. Of, uh, um, I can't think Good right for you now. guys. But it, we have a, a three day festival, two stages there. Supporting and teachers is a. What's that? Supporting teachers as well as the. Uh, um, it's not so much about that higher education, it's about the education. <laughs> oh! And the. Um, other field. I understand now. Field, okay. Actually, yeah. That's kind of it's kind of why I asked. I thought that might have been the case. <laughs> Very good. But yeah, it was, we did. A, I heard a story the other day. A lot of teachers leave in the industry. That's why you know, it was on, oh, it was yeah. on my mind. Maybe they'll be out in the world. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so you get a lot of teachers out there, do you? <laughs> yeah. You probably do. Actually, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, well, this has been fun, man. The uh, the sh show flies by, doesn't it? It does. Real fast. Talking with nice. you is oh, incredible. I just met well, you. I know. It's good. Yeah, look right? at this. How Here long has are. it been? Long time. I don't know, but we feel, I feel like we're friends now. That's how long it takes. That's kind of the. It's probably the best compliment I can get when people leave here, because you know, people come in here nervous. I know you're not, but <laughs> maybe you are. I don't know, but but you don't see. I was asked that question many times in my life. Did you, you ever nervous? get nervous? And I'm like, I have an issue. Like, <laughs> I lack this thing of like nervous and getting excited. Yeah. I want to. People yeah. are always like, Oh my God, you're doing that. Are you excited? And I'm like. Yeah, but I don't like something's missing from me there yeah. in those two ways. Until just, I'm in the moment, yeah. then I am excited or nervous. I can't pre feel something. I, <laughs> I, can't, a, I, I feel like that's a nice balance, though. I think yeah. that's good. And then when you're in, like this. and you live in the moment, then when you get there, it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't, I'm yeah. not a future thinker. Yeah. I don't worry about things that haven't happened yet because I, I don't understand that concept. Yeah. I will deal with the situation when it develops. Well, you avoid this then because, like, my wife will give me uh, crap sometimes because, like, say if I'm getting ready for a big concert and I'm kind of in charge and organizing our little group to go, yep. who's driving, you know, driving, I got the tickets, we'll do this, we'll meet here, we'll do this for dinner. Um, sometimes my wife says I get a little too excited. A little too excited? A little too excited, Drew. Well, yeah. It's like it's ten thirty two. We're supposed to be in the car at ten thirty. Let's go. That, that would be that would be her sister Mary keeping us late. Yep. That would be uh where, she's always late. Where is she? She knows every five minutes at this time of day oh, is twenty minutes in traffic. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So there's a little that bit of that. stuff happens. Yeah, too I much. like to I'm very planned, so <laughs> I like when yeah. if the van is leaving at this time. I like when the van leaves at that I time. I do too. If we're sitting there waiting for like the sound guy to get there yeah. or the drummer to get there. I'm like, Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's known for weeks what's happening right now. <laughs> Damn drummers. <laughs> oh, Michael Bernie, you're joining us here from Newburyport, one of Newburyport Zone. He's been uh, playing some songs and been talking a little bit. You got one more in your back pocket there? Yeah. This is fun, huh? Um, yeah, I, 
I just want to say I really appreciate you having me here. Ah, sweet of you. Thanks um, for the. I'm going to go through all this with everyone. You know, this is course. fantastic. Thank you to anybody who is out there listening and enjoying their life at this moment. You want to stay hip with me? Everything is at Enjoy Michael Bernier. Instagram, Facebook, website is Enjoy Michael Bernier. Um, but again, the, the most important thing that I want people to realize is that it is an option to enjoy your life. That's all. Well said. Um, this is a song I wrote. You said San Diego, right? So I wrote this song. I uh, was living on Jamaica Court and Oceanfront Walk in San Diego and sitting on the wall out there where I would spend like hours and hours every day playing the guitar. And Be I wrote this song. Beautiful. Called Cinnamon. I think it is. Oh, I know what it is. I love this. That's right, there's an intro. I 
can see the truth within her eyes Why must this hell on lead to another goodbye So this kiss blown in the wind with half a smile Is an invitation for us to talk a while Butterflies inside me just like a child Can't live without the sin I'm in in the pretty way. Men, where, where, tell me, could I forget the sin I'm in in the pretty way? Men, where, where, I think about them. Oh. Michael Bernier, fantastic man! Yeah, Sounded thanks good. so much, man. Did you I, like the room? Did you I like love the room? Sounds good, right? It sounds good. It feels good. I haven't played that song in a long time. Is that right? I don't really know the words. But it's so close <laughs> to that, but I loved it all. It's not important in this case. Yeah. Oh, oh, you sound fantastic, man! What a talent! Thank nice you. and you're interesting guy. Now I know why everybody told told me you gotta have Michael on. <laughs> How do you not know Michael? Nice people. There you go. And now we yeah. do know each other. This has been fun, man. I appreciated it. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of fun here to get by. Once that. again, let me say this Saturday night, yep. 6 p.m., Sunset Club, Plum Island is the jam. I'll be performing there 6 to 8. Let's go. There's your weekend plans. Give me a little something. Play me a little something on the way out here as we do the closing credits, will you? This right. has been a pleasure. Michael Bernier. Uh, I did it once. I didn't do it the whole time. I made him French Canadian. <laughs> Michael Bernier. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, this has been fun, man. Thank you to Sarah Blackstone producing the show, as always, and Sarah Hayden, the two Sarahs, uh, doing their thing here, as always. We appreciate it very much. My name is Drew Mulholland. This has been Live at Drew's House, another edition. We'll see you next time, everybody. The great Michael Bernier. I love you. Yeah.